Hey everyone, this is a quick rundown of the mid-journey updates for the month of July. There's a lot to go over, so let's get started. First up, the big news is the release of Midjourney's V6.1 model. This is now the default model for all users. If you don't want 6.1 to be your default, you can always set a new default model in your settings. The 6.1 update comes with significant improvements to image quality with reduced pixel artifacts and enhanced textures, especially for skin. Images are more coherent and 6.1 is better at handling small details. Eyes, small faces, and hands should all look better. Text accuracy is also improved when using quotation marks in prompts. The new model is about 25% faster for standard image jobs, and there are new 2X image upscalers for even better image and texture quality. 6.1 also comes with an update to model personalization. If you haven't tried model personalization yet, I highly encourage you to try it out. I'll leave a link to a video down below. The updated personalization uses a new model with improved nuance and accuracy, which should mean that your personalized mid-journey model better represents your preferred aesthetics. Your personalization code also now updates as you rank more images. To see all of your personalization codes, use the command slash list personalized codes in Discord. You may need to update Discord first if that command doesn't show up for you. 6.1 also has a Q2 mode, which you can use to add more texture and detail to your images, but at the cost of slightly reduced image coherence. Q2 jobs take about 25% longer to complete, but it's another parameter to experiment with. Tile works better in 6.1 and finally works with the upscaler. Side note, did you know that when you open a tile image on the website and then click on the image, it will tile it across the page for you? Pretty cool. All of the parameters and features that you're used to using in the 6.0 model are available with 6.1, but that doesn't mean that they're all using an updated model. For example, zoom, pan, and vary region are available in 6.1, but they are using the 6.0 implementation of those features. These features should get updated to a 6.1 implementation soon. I am putting together a video with a more in-depth look at 6.1, including my own observations and how 6.1 impacts SREF code, so stay tuned for that. But for now, try 6.1 and let me know what you think. Looking ahead, the Midjourney team is already working on V6.2 and we can expect it to be released in the next month or so. Basically, they need to gather data from all of us using 6.1 to make their final adjustments for the 6.2 release. V7 is still a few months away, but their training runs are showing promising results. V7 is expected to be faster with even better image quality and aesthetics, more knowledge and improved language understanding. Midjourney continues to make steady progress on 3D capabilities, Video development is ongoing, although at a slower pace as they are prioritizing consistent quality. The team is also considering adding depth control nets as a feature. It's possible that this could come out before the V7 release, but we'll just have to wait and see. Depth control would give us more control over the 3D space in our 2D images, which could allow us to fine tune spatial relationships leading to more precise compositions. And lastly, Midjourney has a number of secret projects that they're working on. One of those is a storytelling tool, which could be released before the end of the year. Midjourney continues to make improvements to their website that are geared towards creating a better user experience, especially for newcomers. They are working on syncing rooms on the web with specific channels on the Midjourney Discord server to create a more seamless and cohesive community experience. Other features such as speed mode and your settings are already syncing between Discord and the web and we can expect that other settings will start syncing soon. They are also working on getting the custom options shortcuts added to the website so you'll be able to use all of your existing prompt shortcuts both on the web and on Discord. A combined reframing and repainting editor is also in development. The new tool would merge the functionality of the current reframe and repaint features into a single more powerful editor. And they are floating the idea of adding a zoom in feature which could allow you to select a region of an image and perform an upscale on that region. And a final tip about the website, SREF codes are now searchable in your image archive, which is now called Organize. Just type the style reference parameter and the code number that you want to view images for. And before we wrap up, I have an exciting announcement. I've recently launched a Patreon page with both free and paid tier options. If you're not familiar, Patreon is a platform where you get to support creators directly while getting exclusive content and community. Members can suggest topics for upcoming monthly prompt collections, videos, and guides, get access access to all of my Midjourney PDF guides, behind the scenes content, and early access to SREF codes that I'm exploring. There's also a private Discord community to connect and create with other Midjourney users. 
I'll be honest, starting a Patreon feels a bit out of my comfort zone, but I'm excited for the possibilities that it opens up. I just passed 5,000 subscribers on this channel, so a huge thank you to everyone who watches and engages with these videos. If you're interested in checking out Patreon, even if it's just the free tier, I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's it for the July Mid Journey updates. Keep an eye out for my next video, which will be a closer look at the new 6.1 model. If you found this update video helpful, please give it a like, subscribe, all the things. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.